On Sunday, July 18, the SpaceX facility at Boca Chica was a sight to see, as SpaceX was installing the last parts of a prefabricated section of a new skyscraper-sized launch tower. This event might have been a little overshadowed by Blue Origin's trip to space on board the new Shepard rocket, but now the Starship prototype SN20 is already stacked on top of the booster stage Super Heavy 4, and all eyes are back at the Boca Chica starbase. Elon Musk, after seeing the tower completed, even jokingly called his rocket-catching launch tower the Mechazilla. This was a reference to the infamous Japanese creature called Godzilla. Let us take a deeper look into the new SpaceX launch tower and why and how it will change all future Starship launches. The first everyone heard about Elon's plans for a massive launch tower came back in March of 2021. This was when SpaceX filed for permission from the FAA to build a 469 feet tall steel truss structure with a 10 feet long lightning arm. According to the proposal submitted by SpaceX to the FAA, this tower will be used to lift Starship and Super Heavy onto the launch mount. It also further mentions that this tower will be used to catch the Super Heavy upon its return to Earth. We would later come to know that this structure was called the Orbital Integration Tower Assembly, or in Elon's words, the Mechazilla. The tower was assembled by using prefabricated segments that were made on a nearby facility. These sections were prefabricated about two miles west of the launch site. The concrete base and first steelwork appear to be approximately about 105 feet tall, while each prefabricated segment is about 60 feet tall. SpaceX will retrofit the tower with a custom-built mechanism that will actually catch the Super Heavy boosters. More on this crazy catching the Starship concept later in the video. Throughout the past few months, we have seen as slowly each section is moved in place and then fitted as the tower rose to new heights. Last month, SpaceX had been hard at work completing the ninth and final section of the launch tower, which is believed to be the roof. Overall, it took nine sections to reach the 440 feet tall height the tower is standing at right now. The four-legged tower section has been outfitted with several massive sheaves. These are essentially pulleys. These are part of the high-power pulley system that SpaceX will use with the arm carriage, which is supposed to grab a lift and catch Starships and the Super Heavy boosters. From all the photographs and drone footage, it seems as if the tower has six vertical rails running along most of its length. Those tracks or rails will support some sort of elevator-like carriage meant to cling to the tower's exterior. That carriage is outfitted with large arms capable of catching, stabilizing, and fueling Starship. We have seen them being used to stacking the Starship SN20 on top of the Super Heavy 4 booster stage. So where does this massive launch tower come into play in terms of catching the Starship? Well, SpaceX still plans to land the Super Heavy and Starship using its massive Raptor engines to break its fall using retro propulsion. But instead of landing on their legs, these spacecrafts will be caught before they hit the ground. Here is how it works. The Super Heavy will be using its engines to control the velocity of its descent. The grid fins that are included on its main body will help Super Heavy help maintain its orientation during the descent. And since the Super Heavy has more engines, it can reduce its thrust to weight ratio around 1, which means that this will allow the Super Heavy to hover and adequately orient itself to be caught. The Super Heavy will be caught, but its grid fins will ensure that the main body doesn't have to bear the impact of the landing. Grid fins are designed to be very robust and structurally strong since they steer the rocket during re-entry. This means that the whole catching procedure will not compromise any part of the rocket. After the rocket is caught by the giant arms, it will be gently put down on the refueling platform and simultaneously be inspected for any significant damage. Once refueled, the lift will place the Super Heavy back on the launching platform and then place the Starship spacecraft, the second stage of the Starship system, on top of it. The whole inspection and refueling process is estimated to take about an hour. After that, the Starship will be ready to launch once more. This method will enable SpaceX's ambition to use Starship for Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel as well, since now Starship can match turnover times of its rocket airlines to that of commercial airlines. The catching technique will also help SpaceX reach its goal of launching three Starships per day to colonize Mars. SpaceX hopes to use this catching mechanism as a way to reduce the stresses on the rocket as it lands. If SpaceX manages to perform without using landing legs, that will mean the rocket wouldn't be going through various stresses that come with the landing. That means the rocket would almost instantly be ready for redeployment for another Starship launch. 
Not only that, another drawback of using landing legs is the added weight to the whole rocket. Starship's landing gear amounts to about 10% of its total weight. In theory, if SpaceX could develop another system of safely landing the Super Heavy without using landing legs, that would mean more payloads could be transported per launch. This is precisely what Elon had in mind when he first announced his ideas to catch the Super Heavy. In his tweet, he explained, Saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount, ready to refill in under an hour. Only the future will tell if the Maxilla is up to the task. The Maxilla hasn't been praised by everyone, especially the US aviation regulator, the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, has been publicly critical of the launch tower. FAA has warned SpaceX that they still have not completed their environmental review of the newly constructed tower. In fact, they might have hinted that they could take the tower down if need be. Most people believe that SpaceX began construction on the 400-foot towers under the presumption that it would not require any more input from the FAA. As we know, SpaceX had filed with the FAA back in May that they would be making a large launch tower that would also function as a catching mechanism for their incoming Starships or Super Heavy boosters. According to the FAA in a letter published in May, the launch tower may complicate the ongoing environmental review process for the Starship Super Heavy launch vehicle program. The company is building the tower at its own risk. It is possible that changes would have to be made at the launch site, including to the integration towers, to mitigate significant impacts. This was another clue that the FAA was thinking of taking down the tower if they saw that it was something that needed to be done. On August 3rd, we first saw the launch tower in action when the first space-ready Super Heavy booster, the Super Heavy 4, was lifted via a crane onto the launching pad adjacent to the SpaceX new launch tower. The Super Heavy 4 is about 230 feet in height and came to about little more than half the height of the 400 feet launch tower. On August 6, we saw the final preparations as the SN20 Starship was stacked on top of the Super Heavy 4, making history as the longest ever rocket in the history of spaceflight. The SN20 is equipped with six Raptor engines, with three sea level Raptor engines, while three are vacuum optimized Raptor engines. SpaceX plans to do a flight test with the newly stacked SN20 along with the Super Heavy 4 booster boosting it. According to the flight plan that SpaceX has submitted to the Federal Aviation Administration, the Starship SN20 will launch from the orbital launch pad at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. About three minutes into the flight, Super Heavy will separate and descend into the Gulf of Mexico off the coast from Boca Chica. Meanwhile, in the upper stage, Starship will continue the ascent to about 328,000 feet before landing 100 kilometers northwest of the island of Kauai in Hawaii. SpaceX has not released any more details on the flight plan until now. The assembly of this massive launch tower speaks volumes about the commitment SpaceX has to accelerate its progress towards commercializing space travel. Future tests will be exciting as this launch tower is used to stack and then catch starships as they come back from their flights.